kick us off as a, as a panel. There seems to be a lot there about how you position yourselves in relation to the people you're working with and in relation to their objects. I mean, it seems like we've got like, the full spectrum. Um, and, uh, and also how you feel about yourself as a person, as a researcher, as an activist. Um, uh, and I wonder if you want to kind of explain maybe how you've made some of those decisions, because it feels a little bit different for, yeah. for each of you about how you, you come into the, the, the spaces and places and people that you have. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, I suppose. Yeah. I'm in a very different position from both of you, who are kind of embedded within communities that you're working with. Um, I, I'm really. Yeah. We we haven't done that. Um, and I suppose partly it's to do with the the way that the collection of objects has been collected. It's made that very difficult. Um, and I think. That you know, we, we did have, you know, we did talk about whether we should approach people who are in the UK. We've been through Calais, and we had some reservations, I think, about about doing that initially because we um, were worried about you know, the the fact that Calais was a very traumatic place for people. Um, it might not be something that they want to remember necessarily. Um, how do we, you know, there are so many ethical questions around actually working with um, refugee communities and coming through Calais. Um, I think we definitely did kind of feel like we weren't ready to do that at the point in time that we were at when we were kind of deciding what to do with the project. We wanted to look at the objects first as archaeologists and, and to see where that led us next. Um, and actually working with Sarah in Oxford has been really useful in this regard because she's um, and Dan have taken a really collaborative approach to the land exhibition. They have worked with people who not only displaced people who were in Calais but also um, volunteers and charities who were, who were in Calais. Um, and that exhibition has been a really collaborative one. Um, and Sarah and I did go to volunteer in Calais um, for a week last December as well to, um, at the warehouse there because the situation is ongoing. There's still um, a lot of displaced people in Calais that various charities are helping and there's a big um, warehouse there with, which is distributing materials donated from the UK um, and also the refugee community kitchen there as well. So um, I think both of us do have a, a strong commitment to, to making that work that's going on there very visible um, as we can but I think we are now at the point where we're sort of coming to the end of this assessment process and thinking what we do next um, and how we go about you know, working with these objects. Um, we did have at the chat conference we had a um, workshop session um, where we worked with some of the objects with people at the conference um, and that was really valuable um, and I think I'm scared to do that before then because <laughs> I was thinking they're just such kind of people have such reactions to the objects um, and I was wondering whether it, people would think it would be a disrespectful thing to be working with these objects given their history um, but actually I found it really um, provoked lots of useful conversations Mm -hmm. So maybe that's a way forward, and we can think about. Mm -hmm. That's kind of a long rambling answer. Mm -hmm. But, um, but, um, but, but yeah, I, I know. That, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. Either Henry, do have anything you'd like to? Um, I've actually forgotten what the question was. Uh, it was a rambly <laughs> question about how you sort of position yourselves with the people you're working with. Um. I don't, it, it is really, really difficult. Um, I, I find it difficult. I'm quite pro-Palestinian anyway, I do have to say, and I always have been. Um, and I sort of have made... I think they, they know that. Um, but the fact that I have Lebanese citizenship, somebody the other day I was talking about um, through my husband, suggested that that made it easier. But actually, Lebanon make 
their lives so difficult. I don't think being Lebanese actually does help that. And, and some people in Lebanon actually treat Palestinians and think of them so badly mm. that um, I, I don't think that necessarily puts me at um, an advantage. But it's, it is difficult because you do get involved and because it's people, it, I know with the objects, it's sort of, you can't really get emotionally attached, but because it is people, you, you do become emotionally attached with them because you have to form some type of relationship um, with them because that's, you know, that's going to make your work um, better, I think, because you get a better understanding of what's going on. If you try and um, distance yourself from them, you're not, that people aren't going to tell you things. Um, one gen the second gentleman I showed you is quite, still quite guarded with me, even though I've met a few times. His wife will tell me anything, but he's not, he's not sure at all about me. He's a bit sort of um, standoffish. But I know that after I've met him a few more times, he'll be much more willing to tell me all sorts of things. Um, but he did tell me about that box, which is something um, that is troubling me now, that it troubles him. But yeah, <laughs> but... Um, that, you know, so the, so you need to build a relationship with people to to be able to to unravel their story, to understand what it is um, that has happened to them, and and how it is that you can help. Um, maybe I don't know whether you can really help. Um, but I think it's not promising to do anything, as because if you make false promises, I think that would be the worst mm -hmm. thing. So um, I think the fact that somebody is willing to listen and willing to write something about their story is what they love the most and they're all so keen, mm -hmm. all so keen to be involved, yeah, yeah. And there was anything you want to add? I know you sort of really touched on this quite a lot in, in what you've already said. Yeah, I guess like the one thing I would add is that also we're all doing like hugely different projects and we've yeah. come to them in very different ways and there is like, there's a huge difference between like you know, I'm working with a community that is based in London, like I'm in touch with people pretty much every day. It's, you know, like a far more kind of close relationship in a whole number of ways than, mm. than you know, Henry would have with people yeah. living in, in Lebanon, or you would have Louise with like, you know, kind yeah. of these objects that have arrived at Mola in a very kind of, you know, convoluted way.